Welcome back. My name is Derek Benish. I'm Associate Dean in Global Learning here at Kirkwood Community College. And this is a special edition of Going Live with Global Learning. Special edition in that we are in Iowa Hall and there is an audience. So uh, kind of a special occasion here, part of the uh, Spotlights and Showcases event that uh, Kirkwood has been having over the past uh, week. So I am joined today by uh, two guests and both of them went to Brazil on a study abroad experience quite recently. Um, here sitting next to me is Adriana and then Kyla on the far side. And I will start just by asking you both to um, in introduce yourself, maybe where you're from, um, you come from a large family or a, a small family. Um, so just, yeah. In Introduce yourself and what you're, what you're studying at uh, Kirkwood. So, I'm Adriana Herlash. I am originally from Coleman, Wisconsin. I uh, come from a very small family. We live in the rural country. Um, this is my first year at Kirkwood, and I'm ag science, and I'd like to major in crop production. Uh, my name is Kyla Higgins, and I'm from Piasta, Iowa, and I'm from a, also a small family and I'm studying agriculture business, and I just finished my first year, so. Thank you. Yeah, and I was uh, speaking with both of you uh, previously, and although neither of you are from uh, uh, Family Farm exactly, you both had a previous experience on, uh, with a farm or, ag or agribusiness or some, some kind of a connection to uh, farming, which of course, I guess, is why you uh, chose, or one of the reasons that you chose the uh, degree that you're in at uh, Kirkwood. So that's great. That's great. So um, please, uh, yeah, please tell us about the uh, study abroad experience. Uh, you went to, you went to Brazil, came back uh, like less than a month ago, right? Yep. Yes. And um, yeah, tell us about that experience. Uh, we'll start here. So yes, yeah, so we went to Brazil about mid-March and Honestly, I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to go. Um, we made so many connections down there, especially with students from UFLA down there. And they were very welcoming and nice, and we just felt at home, even though we were in a totally different country. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. We spent most of the time in Lavras, which is where UFLA is, and it was just homey, even though it wasn't home. We made a lot of new friends, and we went and saw quite a few different sectors of the agriculture industry there. I think pretty much every day we focused on something different, which was really cool. Did you have some different experiences, some uh, unique experiences with uh, different foods? Uh, anything that would be memorable that you could talk about? Something that, um, something that was uh, interesting, surprising, delicious to you that you haven't had before? Um, definitely when we first got there we stopped for lunch along the road at like a steakhouse type restaurant and they were bringing around different kinds of meat and we were just kind of eating them and didn't really know what they were but they brought around one and it was actually chicken hearts and so we did try those and we had a lot of different foods too. I mean they were speaking Portuguese because obviously English is not number one language down there, so trying to understand what kind of meat was coming around was a little bit uh, tough, but it was all so good. It was just amazing. I was blown away. Were they also giving you uh, uh, vegetable dishes with, uh, with the meat, or it was just, or it was just a, series of, a series of meat dishes? Rice, beans, meat, and then fruit. Okay, okay. Yes. So it was like several courses of meat and interspersed yes. with some with some other things yeah we like you could go around like a buffet type style for the sides but then when like they brought the meat around like kind of on like i would call them like skewer type things yeah. and then they would cut it off right onto your plate yeah. oh, so nice. that was cool nice nice yep. and so they'd like ask you if you wanted it yep. first and then yes. they'd put it on your plate if you, yep. if you if you said yes and you, you probably didn't have enough, have enough time to do a to look up a dictionary or do some no. translation it was just like no. it's meat does it look good Put it on my plate. Yes. Yes. That was yes. pretty much how it went. Cool, cool. And then were there were there other experiences with food too, other than the other than the first the first kind of steakhouse place? A lot of it was buffet. Everywhere we went was a buffet. Um, there might have been a few restaurants here and there where in the evenings we'd get dinner and we had a menu and then we were able to use Google Translate to try to mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what it was. But 
for the main part, it was, yeah, buffet, and we got to pick what we wanted. Um, one place we stopped at um, was a lakefront buffet, and we got to see him cook it on the stove, like a oh, brick s- s- fire stove. stove. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really interesting to see, and so it was nice and hot and fresh. It was really good. Neat. Mm-hmm. And then um, talk a little bit, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, kind of like the, the visual of the country or the feel of the country or the, or the humidity or maybe different smells or something like that. So compared with Iowa or the Midwest, you're from mm-hmm. Wisconsin, uh, where we enjoy four seasons and kind of our summertime is a particular kind of um, hot with mosquitoes, et cetera. Uh, and, you, we, we, and we kind of see, you know, green around. Did, um, did, the, did the part of Brazil that you were traveling through, did that, did that look similar to Iowa, or in what way was it different? i say it was very similar. I mean, I was very humid in the summers. Uh, Brazil was a, a different level of humid because you'd walk out at 7, 8 in the morning, and it just hits you in the face. But um, the weather overall was nice. It was warm and humid, yes, but... I mean, it was perfect while we were down there. Yeah, I would say the only, like, thing was it was quite an adjustment going from, like, our whatever, like, probably 16-degree weather here to what was, like, 80 degrees there. And the only day that I thought was, like, really hot was our last day, and it was, like, 104 that day. We were in Rio, and we were up seeing uh, Christ the Redeemer. And you couldn't even nail down on kneel down on the pavement because it was so oh, hot. I mean, it so was like sulging. So interesting. Yeah. Yes. Wow! 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 And they didn't have many places with AC. Like we walked, no. you walked into a building and it was just slightly just cooler fans. than outside. Uh-huh. So that was uh-huh. different than here because you walk into a building here and it's chilly in the summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then did you did did you see a lot of corn and bean production, or were there were there other things that you that you saw, as well? Yes, there was a lot of corn and soybeans. Um, while we were there, it was so weird because it's March and we got to see them harvesting soybeans. So that was really unique to see was how they're able to grow um, much more crops during the year compared to us. Um, and Brazil is number one in soybeans, so it just makes sense because they can grow year round. Okay, so they're 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 getting like two, two maybe more. I don't know. Yeah, I'd say solid thousand. two. I okay. think yeah, it was two or three growing seasons yeah. they have, which was pretty crazy because mm-hmm. like we think about doing that here, and you're lucky mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. can get two. Yeah, and so like from an agribusiness perspective, was it interesting to see crops being produced in a different part of the world? Like here's the corn and soybeans. Yeah, that influence the markets in the U.S. It was definitely interesting. And then one other thing that I thought was really interesting is, like, they don't do their beef, like, when they raise cattle, they do it on the poundage, not on the quality. Where we are really quality-focused here in the U.S., it's different there. It's just by the pound, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's interesting. Did you did you see some beef, some like beef feedlots, or is it most uh, most like range uh, raised uh, beef, or what? What was range? That? Saw a lot okay. of range. Yeah, it was a lot of like rotational grazing. Oh, yeah, so okay. If, they, yeah, if they weren't fields, they were pastures. Oh, okay. No, I mean everywhere you looked, there was a pasture. I mean, there were just there was so many. And you're probably talking like a thousand acres or something, or what is it? Um, well, they use hectares instead okay. of acres, okay. but. Yeah, I mean, it was, there was a lot. It was crazy. It was a lot of luscious greenery. Okay. Okay. Neat, 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 neat. Um, Did you, um, did you face any challenges in the uh, study abroad experience? Big or, big or small? I wouldn't say really we did. And even like language wasn't really a challenge because at the university, most of the students spoke English and like they spoke almost better English than we did at some times, so. I, I was nervous about getting homesick while being there. Um, but like Kyla said, I mean, while we were there, they were so welcoming and just so happy that we were there. Um, everyone stopped to greet us and at least say hi and ask if we were enjoying our stay there. So I, I didn't get homesick at all. It was really nice. Nice. Plus, I think your group leaders kept you pretty busy yeah yes very yes. busy and the time flew by because we were constantly doing stuff and mm-hmm. going to see different things so it felt like we were barely there mm-hmm. neat very good um 
how will this uh, how will this experience uh, in another country uh, studying abroad? How will this experience you think um, impact your um, future perspectives uh, or kind of impact your um, um, view of view of things? I. I would like to be able to make more connections with people around the world in agriculture. Being down there and being able to talk with the instructors from UFLA um, or even just like friends that um, with our instructors that made it possible for us to go down there. Just being able to talk to them and get they were just happy to be able to show us what it's like down there. And so I would love to just be able to go abroad again and get to do it all over again and get to make those same connections. And I'd like to put it into my future career to be mm -hmm. able to communicate with people all around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, it was just very eye-opening. Like, I went to British Columbia before, but this was very different from the U.S. where that was very sim similar. And the, it was just really cool and definitely changed my perspective on just everyday life in general. Neat. Especially you leave here in the winter, arrive there in the summer. <laughs> yes. yes. That was. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Um, I, think, I, think we've, I think we've learned an awful lot about your uh, study abroad experience. And it really sounds like, I mean, you've told us that you've had an impactful and uh, great time with mm -hmm. uh, study abroad. And um, thank you very much for joining us today in this uh, special edition of Going Live with Global Learning uh, here live with the uh, audience. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.